you remember when we used to have to take our wallets everywhere? I know, now everything's on the phone. Do you remember your first wallet? No. You don't? You don't, I do. Mine was a gift from a relative from Australia when I was like six or seven. They were visiting me in town and it was like this Velcro wallet with like a nylon and it was like turquoise and it had a kangaroo and an Australian flag on it. I thought it was the coolest thing. Do you remember the things we used to put in our wallets and treasure? Yeah. 1982, the big family treat was going to Roy Rogers. I was a member of the Buckaroo Club. I was so proud of that card. Every time we went, I dressed up as a cowboy. That's awesome. And now, you know, I want to make my wallet as thin as I can so I can keep it in my pocket. And as things have gone contactless and transitioned into the phone, it's becoming increasingly unnecessary to carry a wallet, right? It's pretty amazing. Everything yeah. these days are on our phone. I know, you know, it started with transportation cards and then, you know, it's moved uh, through to credit and debit cards and payment, and now it's coming to ID. Mm -hmm. You know, we're seeing a huge acceleration of mobile IDs and driver's licenses across the US, but I think the biggest thing I'm proud of is what it's gonna mean for the traveler as TSA has adopted the MDL standard. Yeah, I can't wait, you know, being a resident of Virginia for Virginia to start issuing mobile driver's licenses. With the amount I travel, if I could have my boarding pass and my ID and my phone and not have to pull anything out of my bag as I'm moving through the airport, it'd be an awesome experience. It'd be fantastic. Yeah. You know, something else I'm really excited about is the fact that you can choose the information you share you know, one of the other reasons I pull my driver's license out of my wallet is when I, when I go to a bar and they ask me for ID, and I don't see why they need to know my address and everything else about me when they just need to know I'm over, over 21, right? It's kind of creepy how much information we've given out over our lifetimes. You know, I'm also incredibly excited about the fact that the information's kept on the device and controlled by the person. I think that privacy is gonna be critical over the next couple decades, and we're really enabling not both the acceleration and the privacy by design. Yeah, absolutely, and, and there's a fraud angle to that as well, right? As, things, as these use cases transition online, the fact that you can really securely prove that someone is who they say they are and can access benefits and other things that they have rights to but can't be defrauded by people that don't genuinely have access to those benefits and so forth, it's a huge thing to be able to secure. Yeah, it's rare as government technology providers that we've been enabled to both help the government bring down fraud, waste, and abuse and enable the citizen to get the benefit faster. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's a true win-win, right? True win-win. Matt, we've been talking a lot about the U.S. What's going on in the rest of the world? Yeah, there's a lot going on uh, in, in Europe, uh, the EU has uh, initiated the EU wallet program and they're deploying a series of large-scale pilots in various different countries with various different use cases. In Latin America, we've been issuing digital IDs as a counterpart to the physical ID, the national ID card. In Colombia for some time, in our new contract in Chile, there's a digital national ID card and a digital passport included. We see across Africa and the Middle East various different initiatives going on, some being led by telcos, some being led by banks, some being led by national governments. Finally, in, in Australia, you see a very similar ecosystem developing to the one that we've been talking about in the US. Yeah, the, the ecosystem's fascinating in the digital world. I think the next uh, decade or so will be interesting to see how banking and payment change to adopt ID, how government benefits change to adopt a digital ID, and how citizens drive the consumerization of what's largely been a government service for the last 60 years. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be really interesting to see how it really evolves around the world. But as we were talking about earlier, for sure everyone is gonna win from this transition to digital ID. It's gonna be super exciting to see it develop. I can't wait. Yeah, me too. Wow, time really flies when you're talking digital ID. Yeah. Shall we get back to work? Let's do it. Oh, Matt, I forgot my badge again. Did you forget your hand too? No. Let's go. Access granted.